Happy Diwali! been a long journey a long road it is that time of the year again and i decided to wear you know a nice kurta which you know from this angle might look like a chef's apron but we're rolling with it the windows are open and you might be able to hear did you hear that that's a cracker um people are not supposed to be bursting them but it happens anyways you know i like to be optimistic and think that it's gotten better this time around but let's get that out of the way this entire video is all about how i got a $250,000 scholarship to study at the united states no how i got to study at the university of southern california it was one of my top choices for sure i really really love their filmmaking program their psychology program they have one of the best business schools in the united states so it definitely was a really really big thing for me and i'd like to pass down every single thing i've learned about the scholarship process applying to usc for you so first things first what really is this scholarship i've fallen so many times it forged character though and growth in my rhymes now when I fall, I'm older. What really is this scholarship? The University of Southern California offers a range of merit-based scholarships to individuals who are applying both international and national. And this is one of the few merit scholarships that international students can also be considered in. So, how does the entire process work? There are about 40,000 applicants who apply to be a part of University of Southern California's merit scholarships. And it's important to understand that if you want to be considered for the scholarship, you have to apply by the priority deadline, which is December 1st. You don't have to fill in any extra bits for the application, you just need to submit it on time. Now, out of those 40,000 applications, around January 23rd, you're going to be notified if you made the cut for the scholarship list. So, around January 23rd, I did get a mail that told me I was accepted into USC and that I was shortlisted for the scholarship. How did that look? So they have the Mork Family Scholarship, which goes to about 10 individuals. They have the Stamp Scholarship, which goes to five individuals. They have the Trustee Scholarship, which is what I received, which goes to about 100 individuals. And then they have the Presidential Scholarship, which goes to 200 individuals. So when I was shortlisted, they said that I qualified for two metrics. I qualified for a half tuition scholarship and a full tuition scholarship. And the way it works is that you have an interview stage after that, which will determine whether you get the 50% scholarship or the 100% scholarship. So if you do end up qualifying for the scholarship, you might be asking yourself, what are my chances of getting, you know, the full scholarship? Approximately half the individuals who qualify for the merit scholarship do get the top award, which is a scholarship for 50% of your tuition, which is huge. Basically, out of the 1,800 to 2,000 individuals who make the cut for the scholarship, half of them are getting 50% off on their entire tuition. Apart from that, you have another 20% who are given a full ride, which is a full tuition scholarship. And then another 25% will also be getting a dean scholarship or other smaller scholarships, which aren't as big as the original ones. So you can immediately tell that if you make the cut for the USC Merit Scholarship, there is a very, very high likelihood that you do get one of your top awards and get a very good package to possibly attend USC. Now, in terms of my application, what advice would I like to give you if you're going down the same path? I break it down into two segments. Number one are the essays because I feel like they're really, really important for you to tell your story. The second part is all about the interview and I've been getting a lot of requests for this as well. What are some interview tips that you'd give to someone applying to colleges? And this piece of advice does apply to USC, but it also applies to so many more colleges because it is a very good opportunity for you to rise above the paper and show a college and the admissions officer some part of who you are in an actual conversation. So let's start with essays. To all the people that got love for me, I push on to try to write our stories. These are the days for a constant building. So the big essays that I used for the University of Southern California, I've already spoken about before. You can go check them out. There were one on Indian Sign Language as well as one on the Why Us essay. The Indian Sign Language essay can be seen in my Stanford Supplements essay, which I will link down below. And also the Why Us essay, I very recently spoke about two videos ago. So you can check both of those links out below. The ones I'm going to be talking about are my favorite prompts, which are the shorties. And these are basically the short prompts the University of Southern California asks you to try and understand understand a little bit more about you and a few fun things. You know, the entire application is very academic, it's very work oriented, and this is where you really get to let yourself loose and just talk about things that you like. So let's get down to them. The first one that I was asked, best movie of all time? And my answer was, the big short. What do you do when everybody calls you crazy? Push on. Sanity isn't statistical. 
So if you break this question down, you know I have my immediate reply, which is the big shot. But I also do want to tell them something about me that they wouldn't have known unless I explained why I love the big shot. You know, there can be like 500 reasons you like a movie and giving one really tries to make a connection between who you are as a person and then this film that you really like. So by saying, what do you do when everybody calls you crazy, push on sanity is in statistical. I'm talking about how I try to go against the green, how I try to beat the odds, because in the movie, it talks about this small group of people who decide to short the market. And you know, that's why it's called the big shot and how nobody believed them. And that's how I would like to be as a person, pushing on even if nobody really believes me. Sanity is in statistical. Next question, what is your dream job? And this is something that I feel like is a little corny and cliched now that I think about it in retrospect, but I really like this. Um, I said, storytelling, weaving tales I wish to captivate and inspire my listeners, my ideas swaying theirs. So I really tried to tie in another theme that had been running through my entire application, which was about storytelling and how I'd like my messages to have an influence over other people and try to impact other people in a positive way. And if I really did have a dream job, it would be that. Because as a person, there really isn't one career I gravitate towards. It's something about a career that I really like. And for me, if any career has an element of storytelling, which is creating and sharing, then I'd instantly love it. So that was the reason I answered this way for your dream job. Next one. If your life had a theme song, what would it be? What I was thinking when I went into this was I didn't want to just pick a basic pop song. You know, everyone's going to use something that the listener has heard of. So I decided to talk about a song that's not too well known, but I really like because of the message. And I think that if you're going to pick a favorite song, try to pick one whose message you feel like reflects a little bit about you, because at the end of the day, these answers are supposed to reflect who you are. So my answer was this push on by surreal and the sound provider. And then to elaborate on why the sound really appealed to me, I decided to put a quote straight from the song. Put your best foot forward and try to keep pace push on. So if you're going to notice in the movie, as well as this answer, I've tried to link these two ideas of pushing on, um, which really talks about how I as a person will always, always push on. Like I want nothing to stop me and I try to make sure that I battle out of every obstacle in the way. And if you're wondering what the song sounds like, it's been running through this entire video, like every intersection. And even in the beginning, in all probability, you're going to hear this song. It might get me copyrighted, but it's worth it. Next question. What TV show will you binge watch next? And my answer was this. Must Admi by Indian stand-up comedian Biswa Kalyan Rat. Earnest humor to say the unsaid. So I really am a big fan of Indian stand-up comedy in particular. I really, really, really love how you can use humor in anything. And you know, I'm probably not the funniest person, but I still really appreciate it because I feel like to get someone to laugh, you really have to know them and relate to them in a very unique way. And Biswa is one of my favorite Indian comedians. So I just wrote it down. I was honest about it. Next question. Which well-known person or fictional character would be your ideal roommate? And I was stuck on this. I did not know what I wanted to talk about this because I mean, I didn't really have an ideal roommate and I didn't know what I'd want in a roommate. And I kept thinking and I kept thinking and whenever I'm stuck on something, I just go back to Disney because when it comes to fictional characters, they have obviously my favorite ones. And I was thinking about what I'd like in a roommate. I'd want them to be like huggable, like really nice, caring, take care of me when I forget to like look after my own health, things like that. And eventually I was just like, Baymax, like Baymax would be the ultimate roommate. So this is what I ended up writing. From treating any of my ailments to heated hugs, Baymax's unconditional care wins. Lollipop? Question mark. Because, because in a scene in the movie, he- Hello, I am Baymax, your personal healthcare companion. I was alerted to the need for medical attention when you said, Ow, you have been a good boy. Have a lollipop. So yeah, again, honest answer. I'd kill to have Baymax as my roommate. Okay, next question. What is your favorite book? And I picked a very, it's not a kiddish book, but it's a very short book. Like I'm not trying to show my intellectual prowess over here, but this is what I wrote. Jonathan Livingston, a novella to revisit the seagull inside of me, hungry, happy, and learning. And I feel like that is three words that I describe myself, which are used to describe the bird in the book. And it's all about how this seagull is trying to learn how to fly as if it didn't have the limitations of a seagull. Last question. If you could teach a class on any topic, what would it be? And my answer was this. The devil's advocate, the importance of authentic dissent. How do contrarian views spur innovation? 
it basically goes on the whole idea of the devil's advocate, which is, you know, when you play the devil's advocate, you're asking questions that go against the grain, that try to make someone rethink what they're trying to do. And the whole point I was trying to make was that contrarian views spur innovation. So you can see a very consistent theme being contrarian, dissenting, using your voice and communication to try and influence others. Even through stand-up comedy, you see the same thing. Hungry, happy and learning, breaking barriers. So I feel like through all of my short prompts, there is a very, you know, consistent theme. And then there's Baymax because like, I just love the answer too much. I really could not care less about strategy for this. So that was everything I had for my short prompts or short essays. Let's go on to the interview section. Great. Make cash, make it last. You know how fast them days will pass. In a flash. So first off, how did the USC interview really work? They basically sent me a mail and asked me to try and show up at USC for the interview because they have a really, really big celebration and it's a very big event where you get to stay at USC, you get to interact with students, you get to visit the campus, you get to live the USC experience and then you go in for your interview. But I couldn't do that because I was in the middle of my pre-board examinations, which if you're in India is a very big deal. You can't just like get up and leave and just come back when you want. So I tried to send a mail to them and I'm going to copy paste and I'm going to put a screenshot of the mail here, but they were very accommodating and they did let me take a Skype interview. Now I feel like because I've been through that situation, I know a little bit of how your interview is going to go like as well, because it's now going to be a Zoom interview or a Skype interview because of COVID-19. So since the flying in option is taken out of the way, let's try and talk about how you can prep for this interview virtually. So first things first, how is the interview structured? My interview had one individual who was an admissions officer at USC interviewing me. She was a really, really sweet and lovely woman and very, very interested in all of the work I'd done. And then she also brought in a student and this student had had experience in the same field that I did. So she was from India and she had had a lot of extensive work in the field of disability. So they're going to try to do that best to match you up and have a conversation with someone who has done work like you have. Now, another thing, before the interview actually happened, I was connected through mail to another student at USC and she also did have similar interest in the fields that I did. She was interested in cognitive science and she gave me a huge brief about the work she did. She spoke about the CSSL lab and the brain and music lab and USC does a really, really good job of identifying people who have the same interests as you and trying to get you to have a conversation with them. And those conversations can give you a great insight into how USC is as a campus, which will definitely help you out in your interview as well because it's how you get to show how interested you are in attending a place like USC by asking the student you were connected with through mail tons of questions about the work they're doing how USC is as a campus how some of the departments are how for me social psychology was at USC and maybe a few labs that she could point me towards how I was also interested in filmmaking and I wanted to understand more from her about some of the student organizations that were in the field of filmmaking so Use all of these opportunities to talk, show your interest, and most importantly, get a few insights about campus. Now, how was the actual interview like? It was really easy flowing, it was chilled out, and the first thing I tell you is that you're going to have to be a little prepared beforehand with the articles they sent. I was sent two articles, and I'll link both of those articles down below, and they basically covered the liberal arts education, and they asked me to read those articles beforehand and come into the interview with an opinion about them. It's really not too complicated complex of an article, you just have to formulate an opinion about them and back them up with reasons. And what I try to do is, you know, look at the entire article, which was all about the benefits of a liberal arts education. And I try to tie it in with my experience as a high school student from India. So you don't just want to be limited to the material they give you. You also want to go above and beyond and show how that material personally corresponds to you. Now, what were some of the questions they asked me in the interview? It's important for you to know that they've matched you up with students who have interest in the same field. Even in the interview, there's someone who's probably had a similar background to you. So they do know your application very well, which is why it's very important for you to be at least prepared with your application and your answers. They might go through your common app essay. They might go through some of your USC supplements and ask you specific and pointed questions about the work you've done. Other than that, they just really want to get to know you as a person. And here comes my first tip when it comes to giving interviews. Try to be spontaneous. Don't come in with super structured answers that make you look really well prepared and ready to ace this interview because more often than not, having a well prepared answer in advance comes across as disingenuous because it sounds like you've 
framed all of these things beforehand and you might have had additional help and things just sound a lot more natural when you show active thought. So a mistake that I used to make often was that when I was asked a question in an interview, for example, what is your biggest failure? This is something that I've thought about before, obviously going into the interview, but I don't want to immediately just start talking about this entire failure that I've had, right? Because it's something that you'd want to show a little bit of thought towards. If you immediately give your answer, the interviewer and you both know that you've come in with something prepared, which always does put someone off. So even if you do know the answer to the question, because A, you've prepared in advance, or B, you're just someone who does a lot of self-reflection and knows things about yourself that may not come too easily to other people, always take five or 10 seconds at the beginning of a question to space your thoughts out, think about what you want to say, and then start talking. So what are some of the questions that I was asked in my interview? To start off the conversation, I was asked questions about the two articles they'd sent in advance, after which we really started getting into my common application. They picked up an activity that I'd done. For example, in my activities video, I spoke about how I did design thinking internships. They picked that up and they talked about a line I wrote and they wanted to know more about it because obviously in your activities section, you can't write too much about the experience you've had. So we spoke about that. After that, it got into the essays I wrote and finally, it came to some general questions they wanted to know about me. Questions like, what was your least favorite class in high school and why? Questions like, if you had to go back to your high school and change one thing you did, what would it really be? And this question in particular did stump me because I honestly believe that if you were to change something in the past, you wouldn't be the person you are today. And I knew that, for example, if I didn't make a film in an NGO for children with disabilities, I might not have found it Spectreverse. So if you do disagree or don't have a clear cut answer to an interviewer's question, feel free to take a detour. I very honestly just said, you know, I would not change anything about what I did in high school. and. Try to phrase it in a way that doesn't make it sound like you have no regrets because obviously everyone has regrets, but by and large, if it's a failure, if it's a challenge, if it's a misstep you took, that is just one piece that leads you to become the person you are today. And that's someone that you wouldn't want to change. Another question they wanted to ask, which I feel like is a very important question, is how are you going to make sure you continue your work that you're doing with Spectreverse, which was the organization I'd founded, when you do come to USC? And I had a whole extensive answer about how, how I have teammates in New Delhi, teammates across the country, and I'm really like collaborating with them to make sure that this doesn't get dropped when I graduate out of high school. Then, which I feel is the most important question is, what is one thing you're looking forward to do when you come to USC? So make sure that that's something you think about in advance because it's really where you get to show that USC is a campus like no other. This college is a campus like no other if you know you're talking about other colleges and really show that you do want to go there. And for me, I really, really did want to go to USC. You know, there were so many programs, professors, departments that interested me and I was just honest and I spoke about it. And I even threw in a few fun elements as well. I spoke about stand-up comedy in my application and even to USC, I honestly said, you know, I'd like to try stand-up comedy out with this particular student organization. So don't be afraid to just talk about academic things. Talk about things you do outside the classroom as well. Finally, when it comes to a Zoom interview, when it comes to a Skype interview, it is impersonal in the beginning because obviously you're not seeing the person face to face. A lot of the strengths that you might think you have in terms of, you know, maybe your body language, maybe the way you're able to communicate might get a little messed up because of connection issues. And, you know, there are just so many things that can happen. Try to be as personal as possible. Try to strike a conversation outside of the interview. Try to make it feel like as less of an interview as possible. Like it's not one of those suit and tie kind of moments. Like I openly told my interview right at the beginning that, you know, it was my brother's birthday just five minutes ago because my interview happened like five or 10 minutes past 12 a.m. and my brother's birthday was on 6th March. So my interview happened on 7th March. And I told them, I'm just coming out of my brother's birthday celebrations. We had a really packed day and try to start off your interview on a little bit of an informal note that really like strikes a personal connect with the other person and puts both of you in a good mood. Just put your best foot forward and try to keep